workable for you. I, I'm not trying to sell you something. But if you if you decide at some point that you can do that, the online course, Save My Marriage, you go to Marriage Helper, marriagehelper.com slash save my marriage, all one word. It's actually a 10-week program for the one spouse who's trying to save the marriage, giving you suggestions about what you do and how you deal with it. But the message from David tonight is this. It's okay to hurt. So, David, is there is there value to this uh, woman to do the resentments and those kinds of things, writing them, not sharing them with her husband, but for her, her, or is that going to make things worse right now? Well, I, I, I don't know too much about the situation, obviously, except what we've heard. Uh, it might help to, uh, for her to evaluate herself as far as uh, some regrets that she mm-hmm. has. I might start with the regrets and focus on mm-hmm. myself. Uh, Mm -hmm. You know, what have I done? And I'm not blaming you for the marriage problems. Uh, I want you to hear me on that. Uh, But we all make mistakes. We all have things we need to work on. And so I might start with uh, what are my regrets that I have, uh, things that I could that I wish I could do different, better or more or had done different, better or more. And then really check out some help from other people, such as what Joe is offering you on the Save My Marriage course. Uh, Mm -hmm. And and, and, and and you do need to set some healthy boundaries, but, you know, right now you, you have a wounded heart. It, yeah. it You can hear it in your voice, and I, I mm-hmm. certainly get it. I, I get it. I, mm-hmm. I, I don't understand everything you're going through, but I know you're hurting deeply, and you're not crazy. You're hurting. You're grieving mm-hmm. uh, because things are not the way you dreamed, and I know you didn't sign up for that when you walked down the aisle, right? Mm-hmm. And, right. and and it hurts. It hurts okay. like crazy. So deal with that hurt as best you can. Give yourself permission, David says, and that's a good thing. Yeah. Work on you, knowing it's not all your fault, okay? Right. And, and if you have trouble getting into the Save My Marriage course, let me know, okay? We're going to go to another mm-hmm. caller now, but I'm, our heart yeah. is with you, my friend, okay? Right. In just a few minutes, we're going to take another call, but before that or after that, we're going to tell you if you are interested in going to the Spark of Life retreat, how you can contact Spark of, Life, Spark of Life. David's nonprofit is set up differently than ours. And in David's nonprofit, um, donors actually make it possible for you to go without paying any kind of a fee. Right. Our, ours is a different kind of nonprofit. We work with a, a lot more people, and there is a fee for ours. And, and that's not to say that ours is bigger or better than David's. Don't hear right. that. Just, we're just structured yeah. differently. Sure. And, sure. and if you are interested in our 911 workshop for Marriages in Crisis, If you can, I suggest that you enroll before the end of the calendar year, because if you do so, even if you don't come until next year, if you do so, you can get it at this year's prices, because like every other organization on the planet, we have to raise prices as everything changes. But and, 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 you know, we still give you more than you ever pay for. So if you want to get in at this year's prices, then if you're working with your spouse or whatever, Try your best to enroll before the end of the calendar year, even if you don't come until February or March, so that you can take advantage of that, that this year's prices. Now, Terry, uh, Terry, <laughs> what? Well, I'm losing my whole brain here. You're not Terry. Terry's a, and Terry got to go home, by the way. He's fighting, he's uh, oh, battling leukemia. He uh, got to go home for a few days from the chemo treatments. He's one of our team and a great guy. So yeah. right after this next call, uh, David, let's tell them how they can come to your retreat, okay? So let's we'll okay. take this call here. Okay. Area code 862, you're on the program with us. Hi. Um, I'm calling because of my son, who um, he's 13, and I actually called before where my husband is in the valley. Mm-hmm. Um, last week I was listening to the show where Jolene and Jimmy came on the phone, and I believe that was their second Um My son has been dealing with the loss, and he feels that his father has left him, Mm -hmm. seeing that he's left the home, um, and he's falling into depression, and unfortunately he um, was hospitalized because he wanted to harm himself. Um, He's doing better now, but he still is trying to deal with um, whether his father is going to come back, um, questioning his faith, questioning God, um, if God does really exist. Um, How do I help him? Um, Dad... My husband has been coming around um, and just recently had mentioned to the kids that he would be willing to take them to church for the very first time. Well, well, I would, uh, 
uh, obviously you've gotten your son some help. You said he'd been hospitalized and uh, he's doing better, right? Yeah. Oh, yeah. That's good. That's good. And, and I'm not going to, you know, this is so profound, but I, I know that you love him and you're so concerned and give him permission. And I'm sure you do to, to cre- you know, you create a safe place for him emotionally where he can say anything. Uh, if, you know, I have questioned God and I preached for 40 years and I used to question God and I'd, I'd have to go up and preach. So when our grandson died, I, uh, I wasn't a very happy camper, you know, with mm-hmm. God. And part of a part of a growing faith is to be honest with my feelings, even toward God. Mm-hmm. And so if he expresses that about God and, and you've probably handled this right, give him permission to do that. Uh, mm-hmm. God can take it. God can take yeah. it. In yeah. fact, uh, intimacy with God comes after we fight with God. And so I went to a period of two years of being very angry at God and expressing that anger to him. Me and me and God had it out. And, and when you come out, if, if you're in an environment, let's say my mom uh, acts like she understands that and, and gives me permission to express that and uh, not try to keep me from those expressions uh, like that, then Actually, it helps. It it helps because uh, it validates me as a person when I'm able to express my feelings and my disappointment with my dad and uh, your son maybe has guilt feelings. I don't know. You know, uh, in fact, my dad left when I was about 13. My dad left. My mom and dad split up and uh, I was a wreck. I was a wreck. I'll never forget my mom. Uh, being okay with with my feelings uh and she never and and you're you're going to be okay with your son's feelings too now you're concerned and about him and about his health especially when he's thought about hurting himself so i think you're doing really good um from what it appears to be but you just let him know it's okay for him to have whatever feelings he has and uh and, and just try to listen to him uh we always say a heart with two ears and two eyes and a nose no mouth that's how we listen to each other. And, uh, and I think the other key is for you to be honest, uh, and it's age appropriate, of course, but you to be honest with him about your feelings of sadness or, or uh, you know, your concern uh, about your marriage. Uh, and I know that 13 uh, is a tough age. <laughs> oh, I don't know if I'd go back to be that age, you know. So th- that's kind of my I- encouragement to you about that. I am so, so sorry for his pain. And as part yeah. of this, and I'm yeah. sure you already know this, yeah. while you accept what he feels about his dad and you let him talk with that and you, and you give him affirmation for that, at the same time, be very careful not to throw dad under right. the bus That's because right. that won't help either. I'm yeah. so sorry for his pain and your pain, but thank God you got him to some help. Good for you. Right. Mm-hmm. Thank right. You. Okay. Seems so like you're a great mom. Great mom. <laughs> Thank you, and I'm happy to hear, Joe, that you're going to do um, what a, what about me program for the children? Yes. Uh huh. Yes. And I and think that's... just because he, I played the audio message of Jimmy, and mm-hmm. it was like I think it was like a mirror image for him to hear, like he wasn't mm-hmm. alone. He wasn't the only 13 year old that had thoughts of questioning God. Wow. So, and I know there are other children. I just don't want him to lose faith. And I can see God is working on uh, my husband. Mm -hmm. Um, And I know it's in God's perfect timing. I think with kids, it's hard for them to understand. So I just want him to not lose Mm -hmm. sight on that. Right. And I don't know, with respect to my husband, who's still in the valley. Right. Well, let's just, let's hope and pray that he comes out of that valley. May God be with you, my friend. Thank you. Okay, Jimmy, if you're listening out there, did you hear that? Your call last week, Jimmy actually had an effect on another young man your age. David, before we end up here, I want to ask you about two different things. One is I want to ask you to tell the people about your retreat and how they can find out about that. And the other is, before we get off the air here, I want you to talk about forgiving God since you brought that up. Yep. Well, uh, sparkoflife.org, go to our website, and you can find out all about – Spark of Life and our, our grief retreats. We also do grief workshops for those who, uh, for churches. Uh, we also do retreats for businesses who actually pay for the retreats for their employees. And that's been a great success. 
and our Greek workshops are, are all over different churches, different businesses. And, uh, uh, our retreats start on Thursday night and end on Sunday and they're at fabulous places all over the nation. We have retreats. So we're about to put up our dates for our Alaska retreats <laughs> in the summer. We have four retreats in Alaska on the most beautiful place you can, you can imagine right on the Kenai river. Uh, our retreats are characterized by great food, great lodging, uh, bad jokes from David. I have three jokes I tell during the retreat, Joe, you had, you know, uh, <laughs> probably think they're kind of corny and then, uh, uh, but great food and, and great love. And, and our, our groups are small, 16 people at the max at most retreats. So it's a very intimate group. You can, you can come if you're, if you you come with a friend, maybe you're, you're not in grief right now. Uh, you come with a friend, but you have to work on your losses as well. Everybody's got loss. But uh, counselors are welcome to come, ministers, funeral home director. You don't have to have a presiding loss to come to one of our retreats. Uh, it's, it, we don't qualify anybody. If you get in, first come, first serve, that's, that's how we do it. And what was the second part of the question? What, was well, the, what about forgiving God? Oh, forgiving oh, God. Well, did, did you already mention your website? Did you say that and I just missed it? Yeah. Sparkoflife.org. Okay. And uh, you can register for a retreat. You can call us. We have our number there, our email. Uh, Forgiving God, I actually wrote a book called uh, The Guilt of God with a question mark. And it's on our web page. You can order it on our web page. But The Guilt of God, basically, I had to forgive God. Uh, And really, I had to forgive the God I didn't understand. And I have the right as a, as a human being, and God gives me this right to disagree with God. And I, I say this kind of sarcastically, God's usually right, <laughs> and I'm not. Uh, but I do have a right to say I don't like it that he didn't heal Josiah. I prayed that he would heal Josiah. He did not. Uh, I do not blame God for every bad thing in the world because we have free will. Uh, but when God could intervene and he doesn't, I, I, I have to forgive him and, and forgiveness is letting go of the resentments, you know, and I, I so I have to let go of that. Uh, I came close to being real bitter against God and I, I, you know, and I had to let go of that. But, but when I, when I railed against God, I mean, me and God, um, he did listen to me cause he's mm-hmm. my Abba father. And, uh, and, and what helped me forgive God is the cross. I can't get away from Romans eight. If, if he gave us his son, will he not along with him, give us everything else we need. Uh, I can't get away from the cross. Uh, right. I always come back to Jesus on the cross and mm-hmm. realize that God is a griever as well. Mm-hmm. And, you know, God lost a son. Uh, I'll just tell you a real quick story. Dennis and Terry lost their daughter and uh, to murder. And the, when he found out about it, Dennis had to go in the police station to where all the friends and family were and tell them that their daughter, Micah, had died, mm-hmm. had been murdered. Mm-hmm. And as he is walking across the room by himself, of course, deep grief, deep shock, he said, right. he said out loud to God, God, you don't know what it's like to lose a child. And then he stopped and he looked up and he said, maybe you do know what it's like. Mm -hmm. And and, uh, God has grieved and God weeps with us. And and the John 11 passage, Jesus wept and God sees the pain we have. And God comes near the brokenhearted. Isaiah 61 is kind of our verse. You know, uh, they will be called oaks of righteousness, those who mourn now. And so that helped me let go of that bitterness to God, but I really needed permission to express it. Mm-hmm. All right. And so when I had that permission uh, for me, I had to give myself permission mm-hmm. uh, and reading scripture about lament and about how people in scripture uh, ask God the tough questions. Mm-hmm. It helped me let go of that resentment. I, I'm not angry anymore with God. I don't like it when I hear sad stories and we hear them every day, just about, mm-hmm. I don't like it. And I say, oh, God, but I know God will come near the brokenhearted, whether it's in a marriage relationship situation, God will come near the brokenhearted. And uh, that's how that's how how it's helped me. I can't get away from Jesus spreading his arms wide on the cross. I understand. David, David, thank you.
Thank you so much for being part of this program. Thank you for what you do in workshops with us where you help couples. And I'll tell everybody again, if you think you might be coming to the 911 workshop, do you?